to provide a little context, Universa is known to be a tail fund. You tend to make money when things go wrong. But over the last couple of years, you and I have talked about this since then, that you actually were quite bullish. You thought that asset prices would just soar. And that when the Fed would cut rates here, you said a year ago, that's when things would go bad. You said that as recently as a couple of weeks ago. Do you still feel that things could be terrible? We're sitting here at all time highs and it seems like nothing could go wrong in this market right now. Well, right now, it's good to be here with you, Snally. You know, right now, I remain pretty positive, as I've been, as you said, for, for a couple of years. You know, I, I just look back to, 20, to 22, two years ago, and I just think people got that really wrong. You know, the, the general thesis back then was that we were in the 70s. And I just think that, that you know, that was so misplaced. The, uh, the 70s was a very different time than now. The, the big difference, of course, is that we have um, uh, more leverage in the system right now. We have this debt construct. Uh, um, so I just think that people were making a big mistake. The sentiment was so negative. You know, it, the, the, re, we're, uh, the way I have described it is we're in this sort of Goldilocks zone, right? I think other people can recognize that. And what a Goldilocks zone is, it really is sort of this first order consequence of what's going on today. Rates come down. You've got disinflation. You know, you've got kind of not too hot, not too cold in the economy. And people look at that and they say, oh, well, that's, that's good. It's sort of a first order consequence. Um, and, and, and that's okay, and we're, we ha we're really good at first order consequences as humans, right? Um, so, you know, that's kind of where we are, and I think this is going to continue more into sort, of a, into sort of a pure euphoria before it's over. So does that mean you think we'll hit ever more record highs over the next year? How long does that euphoria go on for? Yes, I wouldn't necessarily say over the next year. My opinion is that we, towards the end of the year, oh, we're going to exit this scope of luck zone. Um, so, so, but... Really, what's driving this isn't these sort of first order effects. It's really, we have to think, I think, more about second order effects. And that's something that we're just not as good at as first order effects. We really need to look back to 22 and what happened there. I mean, that was a massive hike. That was a massive tightening that happened in the economy. I, personally, I thought it was a hum, an enormous mistake at the time, uh, and which, of course, makes me look a little bit like a Fed apologist, which nothing could be further from the truth because you'll never speak to a bigger critic of monetary interventionism than me, of course. Uh, but I thought that that was a big mistake, and uh, the second order effect of that is what we're, we're feeling right now. But really, um, what really, I think there are higher order uh, impacts that, that ca is causing all this, and that's what happened 15 years ago. I mean, it really was the Bernanke era, era that got us to where we are, but it's so easy, it's really so easy for us uh, to forget that. Um, so, you know, there are lag effects. That's what second order effects are, they're lag effects, and we're feeling that, starting to feel that in the economy.